Welcome, pilots! This video is part of my guide detailing every high security combat site. While I normally fly an Ishkur for Blood Raider sites, I've instead chosen to fly another assault frigate called the Jaguar. While certainly not the most efficient choice, this ship performs well enough in this site. Combat signatures appear in your probe scanner window, and you must scan them down with probes before you can warp to them. Some combat signatures do not have a DED difficulty rating, and instead have a chance of escalating to a short story-based expedition. The Blood Watch is a combat signature found in all systems with a security status of 0.8 and lower throughout the western regions of Amar space. This includes Iridia, Genesis, the Bleaklands, Kador, Corazor, and Canid. This site has a decent potential for either a faction spawn or an escalation, either of which may lead to high-value loot drops. Only up to Battlecruiser-class ships will be allowed into the site. As soon as you land on the acceleration gate, an opening message will appear. Previous explorers have commented that one of the gates requires a passkey. Alternatively, it can be bypassed by convincing the commander to unlock it. The Overseer guards the Cathedral vigorously. You must activate the gate to enter the first room of the site. In the first room, you'll conveniently land on top of the acceleration gate to the next room. The area is guarded by three separate groups of Blood Raider NPCs. The first group is below the gate near a collection of blood sport structures, consisting of two cruisers. The second group is a ways to the right of the gate, consisting of three cruisers and the third group is a ways behind the gate, consisting of two more cruisers and an Elder Corpy spy drone that will speed towards you with a powerful stasis web. The acceleration gate to the next room is locked. The incoming damage in this site can be quite extreme, so you'll want to be prepared. A ship like the Jaguar relies on its high EM and thermal resists, along with its speed tank. Destroying the Spy Drone will spawn three new groups of Blood Raider NPCs, each consisting of up to four destroyers. Two of the groups flank the acceleration gate on the left and right, while the third is a ways behind. The third group will include another Elder Corpy Spy Drone. Destroying this second Spy Drone will spawn another group of Blood Raider NPCs a ways behind and above the acceleration gate. This group consists of a destroyer, six cruisers, and yet another Elder Corpy Spy Drone. Destroying this third spy drone will spawn the Commander Wave, a ways behind and to the right of the Acceleration Gate. This final group consists of five destroyers, three cruisers, and the Corpatus Militant Commander flying a battlecruiser. Destroying the Commander unlocks the Acceleration Gate to the next room. You can actually avoid fighting the majority of the NPCs, instead taking out each of the spy drones as they spawn. Just be mindful that this approach fills the room with an increasing number of enemy ships. Alternatively, this entire exercise of destroying the spy drones can also be avoided, if you have the passkey mentioned in the opening message. This turns out to be a blood silver tag. If you have a silver tag in your cargo hold, you can simply activate the gate to the second room as soon as you land. The tag will be consumed. Heuristic analysis of this location indicates that attacking the Blood Raider Cathedral would greatly improve your odds of uncovering further illicit activity. In the second room, you'll land on top of a collection of cloven red asteroids in front of the Blood Raider Cathedral mentioned in the message. The area is initially guarded by three separate groups of Blood Raider NPCs. The first group guards the Cathedral, consisting of three destroyers and three cruisers. The second group is to the right, consisting of two frigates, three cruisers, and a spy drone. The third group is a ways ahead and to the left, consisting of three frigates and two cruisers. Destroying the spy drone will spawn five more groups of Blood Raider NPCs, forming a wide semicircle around the room. Each of these groups consists of up to four NPCs flying destroyers or cruisers. The group furthest to the right of the landing beacon will include another spy drone. Destroying this second spy drone will spawn three Blood Raider NPCs flying cruisers, each scattered around the room. Though you might need to take out the spy drones to avoid being webbed, you can actually avoid fighting all of these NPCs, instead taking a single potshot at the Cathedral. This will spawn the Supervisor Group, appearing in a tight formation around the Cathedral. 
This group consists of four destroyers, three cruisers, and the Corpus Militant Supervisor flying a battlecruiser. Destroying the Supervisor will spawn the Commander Wave, consisting of four destroyers and four elite frigates. If you're lucky, a Dark Blood NPC flying a frigate will be among them. The Dark Blood NPC will always drop a Dark Blood Copper Tag and a Dark Blood Small Crystal. If you're even more lucky, he may also drop a Dark Blood Module, an Amulet or Talisman Implant, or a single run blueprint copy for a crewer. Destroying the Supervisor also has a chance of escalating to the Medical Twilight Expedition. The slaves you liberated from this blood facility report that this was a holding place where slaves were gathered before being sent off to a blood replenishing medical station. You have heard about those places, where the blood members go to get their blood exchanged with the blood of a slave who has been put on a special blood cleansing diet for a period of time. Needless to say, this leaves the poor slave empty of the vital fluid in question. Understandably, your newfound slaves are quite thrilled with these recent turn of events. None of them knows where the so-called medical station is. But a couple can tell you that they were in another holding station like this one before they came here. And coincidentally, it is not all that far away. As with all unrated expeditions, Medical Twilight will have you travel through up to four encounters. Each encounter may either continue to escalate or come to an end. Escalations will appear on the Exploration tab of the Agency window. In the first encounter of the Medical Twilight Expedition, you'll land near a Blood Ritual Center surrounded by a bundle of snake-shaped asteroids and sharded rocks. The area is guarded by two groups of Blood Raider NPCs. The first group is to the right of the Ritual Center, consisting of three frigates and three cruisers. The second group is a ways behind the Ritual Center, consisting of four destroyers and four battlecruisers. Attacking the Blood Ritual Center spawns three new groups of Blood Raider NPCs. Each group consists of up to four destroyers and up to four cruisers. Once the Blood Ritual Center has been taken down to about half its shields, the Commander Wave will spawn. This final group consists of nine frigates, five cruisers, and the Ritual Center Supervisor flying a battlecruiser. If you're lucky, a Dark Blood NPC will be among the frigates. This, and any other Dark Blood NPC in future Medical Twilight encounters, may drop a Dark Blood module, or a mid-grade amulet or talisman implant. Destroying the Dark Blood NPC, or the Blood Ritual Center, has a chance of escalating to the second encounter of the Medical Twilight Expedition. Another Blood Hideout and more slaves. You find no clues as to where the medical facility is, but piecing together information from the slaves, you're pretty sure some part of this blood operation is located here. This can be quite the encounter in its own right, particularly if you're not careful to keep your distance as the commander wave spawns. The supervisor henchman frigates will webify and warp disrupt you, which led me to a rather narrow escape the first time I ran it. In the second encounter of the expedition, you'll land directly on an acceleration gate guarded by a group of up to eight Blood Raider NPCs. If you're lucky, one of them will be a Dark Blood Frigate. Destroying the Dark Blood NPC has a chance of escalating to the third encounter of the expedition. This place seems to be deserted, and recently so, as all systems are up and running. Your scanners even pick up signals from small household appliances, indicating that someone should actually be home. When your instruments scan the outpost's docking station, it turns up logs only a few minutes old showing four ships departing at the same time. These logs are incomplete though, only listing departure time and destination. For some reason, all the ships are headed for the same spot. In the room behind the acceleration gate, you'll land near a fragmented cathedral and a bundle of abandoned bunkers. Approaching the structures triggers a proximity bomb, which very nearly destroyed my poor Jaguar. In the third encounter of the expedition, you'll land directly on a newly constructed acceleration gate guarded by a group of up to 11 Blood Raider NPCs. If you're lucky, one of them will be a Dark Blood Pirate flying a destroyer. Destroying the Dark Blood NPC has a chance of escalating to the fourth and final encounter of the expedition. As you float among the debris of the pirate ships, you notice several small canisters of ectoplasm, all marked with a place of origin. Presumably the Blood's so-called medical facility. Whether it is carelessness, cockiness, or plain old stupidity is hard to say, but these pirates didn't bother to hide where they came from. 
Then again, this might be another ambush. In the room behind the acceleration gate, you'll land in front of a large station ruins among a collection of snake-shaped asteroids. The area is guarded by four separate groups of Blood Raider NPCs forming a wide arc around the room, the first group in very close proximity to the landing beacon. Among the cruisers in each group is a Blood Phantom. Destroying each of the Blood Phantom NPCs spawns another new group of Blood Raiders. Each of these Phantom groups has a slightly different makeup of up to seven NPCs, ranging from elite frigates to battlecruisers. One of these groups will include three spider drones that will webify you, and the Blood Raider commander flying a battlecruiser. In the final encounter of the expedition, you'll land near two groups of structures. Each group of structures is guarded by its own group of Blood Raiders, totaling 14 NPCs ranging from elite frigates to battlecruisers. About four minutes after landing in the area, the commander wave will spawn. This final group consists of three elite frigates, four destroyers, three cruisers, four battlecruisers, and the Blood Factory Overseer flying a battleship. Destroying the Overseer will prompt the closing message of the expedition. You're pretty sure that sometime in history, there would have been places in the galaxy where destroying an evil thing like this would have prompted some noble and decent ruler to award you with a medal, or even a prize. The Overseer has a chance of dropping one or more Corpy A-type Dead Space modules, or a blueprint copy for a crewer. You'll have to decide for yourself whether it's worth risking travel through low security space to run the final encounter. You won't be behind an acceleration gate, and the encounter can take quite some time to complete. During one of my playthroughs I did actually realize I was being hunted with combat probes. You'll have to keep a close eye on your directional scanner, and try to avoid being hit by the webifiers or warp disruptors of the elite frigates. A ship like the Jaguar, fit with light missiles, will run the Bloodwatch site in about 8 to 10 minutes, when ignoring the NPCs that are unnecessary to complete the site. Bypassing the first room with a Blood Silver Tag can cut this down to about 6 minutes. Tactical destroyers, faction cruisers, or heavy assault cruisers are all likely better suited for this site, and for the escalation. While recording the footage for this video series, I kept track of the loot drops for 15 Blood Watch sites. Over this period, 9 spawned a Dark Blood Pirate, and 4 escalated to the Medical Twilight Expedition. The Medical Twilight Expedition can escalate up to 4 times, and every encounter seems to be guaranteed to spawn a Dark Blood Pirate. Through my four escalations, I had a total of ten encounters, six of which dropped something beyond the faction ammo and tag. Some of the better loot drops from the expedition included a mid-grade amulet Delta, and a Corpy A-type multi-spectrum coating from one of the final encounters. Stay tuned to Riley Entertainment for more EVE Online combat site guides. In high security western Amar space, you can also probe down other unrated sites like the Blood Hideout, Lookout, or Vigil. Note that the Eastern Amar regions have similar combat sites featuring Sancha's Nation NPCs. Other NPC pirates include Rogue Drones, the Serpentas, Garistas, and Angel Cartel. My journey to host a complete set of combat site video guides began in 2020, with a similar 13-part series for Serpentas combat sites. I followed this up with similar series for Garistas and Angel Cartel. If you find yourself outside of Amar space, you can check out those videos right now. If you're curious about fitting assault frigates for combat site exploration, you can check out the gaming section of my website over at RileyEntertainment.com. Thanks for making it to the very end, and smash that like button if you enjoy my content.